Well, thank you very much for everyone for having me here today. Uh, thank you on behalf of all the Venezuela analysis team. Uh, my name is Katrina Kosarek. I'm, uh, as was said, I'm, I was born in the United States, but I've been living in Venezuela for the last 14 years. Uh, I'm a documentalist. I work with community media here in Venezuela as well as, well as with feminist organizations, uh, apart from the work that I'm doing with uh, Venezuela analysis team. Uh, I think it's so important right now to, to maintain informed about what's going on in Venezuela. There's been a terrible media campaign that I guess uh, Fred is going to talk about a little bit uh, more uh, in a little bit. Uh, but it's really necessary to be in contact to know what's going on in Venezuela. Things are changing here day by day, sometimes even uh, hour by hour. And we're really in a, a, a very critical point. Uh, I think that everyone can, can observe the, the last uh, few things that have, have happened in the last few days. I'm just going to kind of do a recount. Uh, for example, on Tuesday, June 27th, uh, when a blonde-haired, blue-eyed police officer commandeered a helicopter and attacked the buildings of the Ministry of Interior and Justice and the, the Supreme Court of Justice at the same time broadcasting an appeal for others to join him in an overthrow of the government of Maduro. The helicopter attack was carried out by an officer, uh, Oscar Alberto Perez, an officer of the CICPC, Venezuela's P Penal, Criminal, and Scientific Investigation Police Aid Agency. Who served, as the, who served in the agency's special area of Rubei. Acting with another person and using his police ID, he managed to board this helicopter from the Carlota area base in the east side of Caracas, where he flew into central Caracas. Uh, at this time, he released a series of videos on his Instagram account, in which he explained he was part of a network of a supposed network of officers and security forces with, uh, and with army links to civilians with, uh, and was demanding the removal of President Maduro. From this helicopter, they draped a flag with the words 350 Libertad. This, this refers to the Article 350 of the Bolivarian Constitution, which allows for civil disobedience or calls for civil disobedience in the face of a regime or authority that travels on democratic or human rights and which is invoked by the opposition, it's has been invoked by the opposition in the last few days in attempts to overthrow the government. The occupants of the helicopter opened fire on the Ministry of Interior and Justice buildings, where there was a reception for journalists uh, celebrating Journalist Day. Then it flew over to the Supreme Court Justice building, where they threw several uh, grenades, four grenades. Three of them were de detonated, and one of them landed uh, on a nearby avenue and did not go off. No one was injured, thankfully no one was injured during these attacks, uh, but the helicopter uh, was able to escape. It was found on Thursday, uh, however the pilot and the two men who accompanied him have not yet been found. It should be said that although Perez claimed to be, invoked, to be involved in a network of police and military forces, so far the call for the coup against Maduro has not been seconded by any other forces any other security agencies or military agencies. At least no one uh, has, has made any public moves uh, from the military or security agencies uh, to respond to his call. So it seems uh, that, that he was working in a relatively isolated way. The helicopter attack and the appeal for the coup were followed by very tense situations in Caracas as well as other cities uh, in the entire country. There were opposition protests, but mostly violent, violent rioting in a number of places, mainly in middle and upper class neighborhoods, but this time uh, there was also some rioting in working class and poor neighborhoods. Uh, this day, Tuesday, there were several uprisings in Manicami and Caricua, which are popular communities in the south and west side of Caracas. In the last few days, the opposition strategy uh, seems to have gained, in this way, some momentum. Uh, there was a lot of rioting in Maracay, Aragua, uh, this week, uh, where, where there was very severe looting. Over 64 establishments were looted, and uh, most of them establishments that uh, are based on, on food distribution. A number of official buildings, uh, Pesu offices, there was a, a, the, the, the location of uh, the, the Otra Veda in Maracay, which was basically like a, 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 huge, uh, a youth group, um, a place for the youth, uh, a youth cultural center within Maracay. Uh, it was ransacked and burned. Uh, one, one National Guard officer was killed by gunfire within these uprisings in Maracay. 
uh, last week, uh, there were there were many uh, violent attacks by rioters against against the military airbase in Kaloda, Bacas, where opposition terrorists removed heavy perimeter fences. Uh, in, in the last few days, it, the opposition strategy seems to gain momentum. As I said, there's been a lot of uh, there has been a lot of rioting and looting without, within the country. Maracayo Agua is, is one of those places that needs to be needs to be taken a close look at, where over 64 establishments have been looted, a number of official buildings, uh, a youth cultural center called the the Obraveta, uh, PESU offices uh, were ransacked and burned. One uh, National Guard officer was killed by by opposition gunfire. Uh, last weekend, uh, we also saw reported other attacks by violent rioters rioter against the military base of La Carlota, where opposition terrorists removed the heavy perimeter fence, entered the premises. They were armed with homemade rocket launchers, Molotov cocktails, homemade grenades. Uh, these are things that um, that have appeared in many many uh, violent protests over over these times. And, it, they even appeared in the, in the international media, although they never, uh, they're never actually written, they're never actually spoken about. Uh, so we can't really, it, it, it's difficult to even use the term protest at this point because we're talking about uh, armed, armed conflict uh, at this point. Uh, one of the rioters was killed by the Air Force police when it attempted to throw a grenade into the airbase. So that's something that's important to mention. Uh, these kinds of attacks, uh, these kinds of attacks have been recurrent and, and mostly uh, over the last few weeks have been based uh, against uh, the National Guard, uh, against military bases, uh, with the intention to demoralize the military, uh, demoralize the military, demoralize the National Guard, who can't, uh, who find it very hard to be able to respond in front of this because they're still, in, in, in an international perspective, they're still being portrayed as if they were protests. But we're talking about armed conflict, we're talking about armed attacks against military bases. So it's something, it's a situation that's very different, but the National Guard and the military can't act uh, much to protect themselves. They, they just have to uh, basically guard, guard their space without entering in any kind of armed conflict with people who are actually firing at them with firearms. Uh, so, just so that we have an idea of what the real situation is in, in these kind of conflicts. It's very important to mention uh, we're going into a new phase now. Uh, apart from all of these attacks on the military bases, we're going on uh, into a new phase where, where the attacks are being more based on uh, not just the military, but also the, the popular communities. And when we talk about the popular communities, we're talking about attacks on basic services and attacks on, on, on people's access to food, something that's so necessary. Uh, we are going through an economic crisis at this point in time. Uh, there is there is less food available, and now there are, are direct uh, military type attacks against uh, food distribution centers. On Thursday night, more than 50 tons of food were incinerated by anti-government groups in the municipality of Simón Bolívar in Barcelona, in the state of Anzuategui, when a group of attackers infiltrated the government food distribution center. At that same time, popular sectors in Barquisimeto in the state of Lara, where I'm located, were faced with chaos. Uh, all of the main entrances and exits of the city were covered with barricades manned by armed gangs, which not only blocked transportation, and we're, we're not talking about a, a barricade or, a, or, or some kind of protest, we're talking about barricades that, that were built, uh, barricades that are built, blocked transportation, so cars couldn't go through. So what has gone on in the last few weeks, normally people pass through on foot. But that couldn't even happen at this point in time because now there were armed gangs around the, around the barricades that robbed anyone who dared to pass by on foot. Uh, during this situation, a lot of looting went on within the popular, se uh, within the popular section. This situation on Thursday here in the state of Lara, uh, the looting started around uh, between 6.30 and 7 o'clock at night. It's important to note that at 6.00, uh, between 6 and 6.30, there was, a, there was a, 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 an attack against the Municipal National Guard uh, Center in, in Barquisimeto, uh, where, where several protesters were at barricades close to that center, it's called the, 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 the Core Cuatro, 
came in and began attacking the, the center of the National Guard. Another, another center of National Guard in the, in the bus terminal was also burnt to the ground at the same time. So we're seeing a situation where there's general, there, there are barricades, there's general uh, incitation for, for looting, for rioting, uh, armed gangs. Uh, there's an attack against the National Guard, so the National Guard, Guard can't even be deployed into the streets to prevent this kind of situation. And it, it just uh, led to a general situation of chaos. Again, it's important to, to, to know that the, what we're talking about here are not peaceful protests. We're not talking about protests. No one's there. No one was at these barricades with a sign. No one was a, with slogans. We're talking about now situations of, of, of general chaos that are being created. I'm just going to go into more detail about what's going on here in, in, in the state of Lara, specifically here in Recicimento, to, to kind of give some keys about uh, what's going on. Uh, Lara, as in, in other key states in the country, there's been a long-standing operation aimed at creating conditions of violence and in, in ungovernability, which are necessary to put the Bolivarian government in check uh, for the opposition. This is being done in order to achieve a popular idea uprising, which has been elusive, at least massively required in, in a new attempt to defeat the revolution. In Barquisimeto, violent and terrorist attacks have been reduced to, to several uh, small focuses, uh, already known by all. They've been used to create anxiety, terror, and deaths, with an emphasis uh, of those deaths and the killings uh, on the poor, mostly people who have a clear characteristic of being chavista, meaning that they're, they're poor, meaning, meaning that they're people of color. Uh, to mention a few cases, uh, two youth last week were threatened with guns and set on fire, uh, set on fire alive uh, at an opposition barricade in, in Barquisimeto uh, when they identified themselves as chavistas. And I also want to mention there, uh, it's important to mention that these two youth were then refused medical care in the public hospital, which is uh, unfortunately under the, the, the governor's control. We have an opposition governor and an opposition mayor here in the state of Lada. It, the, the public hospital is under the governor's control and these two, two young men who were burned alive were refused medical care within the hospital and they are now suffering from severe infections. These kind of attacks are some these supposed liberators, these supposed warriors who are to, to topple Majero. It's because of a class distinction. Uh, that, among many other things, is what defines Chavismo. It's part of a, a popular class identity. The urgency of the impulse of, of their actions was due to the imperative need to add poor neighborhoods. To add. So the, the main reason that the popular classes have not yet uh, or have not joined uh, the, the supposed liberators, the, the the, the people who are looking to create a coup, the, they have not joined the opposition, is because it's very defined as a popular class. Um, so the opposition has been trying to reposition themselves to be able to create actions, to create the need for, for, for rioting, to create the need for, for, for violence within the barrios. Uh, and, and we've seen that here in Lara, where, uh, again, I mentioned we have an opposition governor, we have an opposition mayor, uh, they've been making up a, a very a very clear operation to be able to de develop those kinds of situations. It's been slow and sustained, but they've been they've been working on it. Uh, with our opposition governor Henry Falcon and our opposition mayor Alfredo Ramos. Uh, over the last few weeks, uh, uh, I I had mentioned to Fred just before just before I came in. Uh, we here in in. In the parroquia Juan de Villegas, where, where I am located, it's the largest parroquia, the, the largest popular parroquia in, in the state of Lara, it has the largest population. Uh, we've been 21 days without access to water, which is a public service which is in hands of the, of the governor's office. Uh, supposedly, the, 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 the copper cables were, were stolen from the water pump, uh, but we know that there, there's <laughs> The government has, the, the, the local government, the governor's office has a responsibility to protect those installations. So there's no reason why uh, those, those wires should have been stolen. 21 days without access to, to water. We've also been facing severe problems with access to gas uh, because of the roadblocks. The gas trucks have not been able to get through. 
Uh, so we're living a very, a very, uh, a very strong situation. Uh, Alfredo <coughs> Ramos, uh, as mayor, has been making making an effort over the last few weeks to enter into the popular communities. His his officials, people, uh, workers who, who work for the for the mayor's office, have been seen in the community giving money out to to youth within the community. And uh, there were reports on Thursday night before the looting uh, that that they were also uh, giving drugs to some of the some of the youth who were then involved within the looting. So uh, there are direct connections between these political figures and the the, the actions that went on uh, at this time. It is important to note up until now the national government uh, has promoted uh, the, the same formula from 2014, from the Guanibas in 2014, where most of the violent actions did take place, almost all of the violent actions took place in middle and upper class areas. Just let them wear themselves out and they'll be rejected by the, by the same people who live within the neighborhoods and that, did, that was exactly what happened in 2014. Uh, but right now, there's other factors that need to be taken in, uh, in account, at least for the popular areas. Uh, we have three, we also, apart from the, the other factors that I already mentioned, we've also been facing three hard years of, of intense economic warfare. Uh, this has impacted the, the popular classes uh, in a large way. Uh, we already have so many problems for access for food. Now we have problems with access of water. Now we have problems with access uh, uh, with gas. Uh, so, so there's there's a different kind of mentality within the popular communities that they didn't manage to have in, in 2014, which is also allowed for the infiltration of, of these kind of actions within the popular communities. And there's and there we find a great political challenge for the revolution and a truly threatening opportunity for the opposition. Uh, we're convinced that, the, that what has happened here on the west side of Barquisimeto, uh, as I mentioned, is the sector with the highest population concentration in Lara. Uh, in the last few days, there's an operation mounted in that sense, especially uh, with an important role on part of the, uh, of the mayor himself, uh, who after visiting popular sectors, has, has prompted a programming that has even been published on social media with several routes of barricades that cut off very specific areas of the city. Um, one of those points is exactly the entrance to uh, Juan de Villegas, the area, the western area of Marquisimeto, uh, which is with, uh, on Thursday evening was the point that was closed off. It's kind of a, uh, the, the main entrance point to get to any other kind of, uh, kind of, any other kind of part within the community. It was also blocked off uh, a second entrance point that allowed for for access to other parts of the community. So we're totally blocked in uh, with, with barricades, uh, with people robbing on either side, people can't even enter and exit on foot. Uh, as that is happening, as that is happening, the, the National Guard comes to the comes to disperse them. At the same time there's an attack on, on the on the on the center, the the municipal center of the National Guard within the center of Arquisimeto. Uh, after the after the National Guard managed to disperse the blockades, they go into to where the the where the community market is at. The protesters go into where the community market is at, uh, and that creates a situation of of looting. It's important to say, uh, that indeed there is a political motivation from for the from the opposition for the installation and support, uh, not. The people who are there, as I mentioned before, are not people who are protesting. The mo most of them are people who are receiving, uh, who are receiving pay to be at the at those points. People who are uh, who joined in to take advantage of the chaos and begin robbing people, opportunists, and a lot of young people within the communities. Uh, there are conditions to add a popular race to a street call, either as a protest or ending at booty. It needs to be said. Um, the, 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 forward here. In, in spite of the clear political call by the opposition to cut off the route of the entrance of, of, uh, uh, of the community, uh, the looting of the market of the Carusenia, which is where, where I'm located, uh, did, it, it's a market, it's a very important market. Uh, it gives service to food distribution and service to about 50,000 people from different neighborhoods that live around it. So we're talking about a very, a very key uh, market point. Uh, 
we can't say that, that the actual looting was a political act. It was politically incited, but the people who were involved had no, had no kind of political message behind it. It was just kind of a logical development of the first action that was cleared by the National Guard and then sought a new objective. And why do I say that? Because right behind the market and right around the market, there are electoral centers. Right behind the market is the center of, of, of the meeting of the, of the commune. And these areas were not, were not strategically attacked. So even though there was an, a, a, a motive, an incentive for the people to, to loot these areas, there was not a political leadership within, within the actual looting. So we're looking at a, a very particular kind of situation. Um, Next to the market, uh, there was also a, a police. Uh, there was also a police, uh, a police station. Some of the uh, the officials did try to disperse the people. Shots were, were made in the air. It, it worked for a short time, but they were not able to disperse. As I mentioned, the, the national guard did not show up because they were they were occupied otherwise with the with the with the protesters or with the the violent rioters trying to take over the, the center of the, national, the municipal national guard center. Um, the local structures of, it's important to say that there was no presence of political leadership of any structure. The local structures of um, the revolution at this point now need moralizing actions, orientations, and clear direction that their activation comes from a coherent plan uh, to the moment of the needs of the people. On an agenda, uh, there, there's now an urgency for national leadership, which, because of undoubted importance it has, must uh, must today more than ever make sense with the basic needs of the majorities and felt in a very clear way. Because we're faced we're faced with uh, with very with very strategic attacks, which are which are based on people's uh, basic needs. We're not talking about a communication or problem. It's not just a communication problem, but it's uh, it's something that needs to get to, to have the capacity to really interpret the moment uh, and really uh, arrive immediately at political action to develop a higher scale of work that, that that's in, in synchrony with the territory, what's going on in the territory. And within this complex context, it's uh, more necessary than ever uh, to be able to, to interpret uh, above all the concrete actions and overcome the contradictions that is seen for the majorities. We're not in a situation of government, we're not just in a situation of government versus uh, opposition of homeland defenders versus terrorists. That's a, just a, a, a simplification of reality uh, that at, at this point can even benefit the, the opposition. In the discourse of the revolution and its government, uh, there are many there are many abstractions and bets on the future that we have that we have to really uh, turn into a concrete reality. It is important to take into account that if an increasingly clear political group seeks to dispute the center, it is necessary uh, to make sense for that cause to move towards the the left, uh, overcoming a government center stance. On the part of the same government that calls for, for rearming the basic needs from a position of class identification, it is urgent to take. It, it, it is urgent. It is an urgent task uh, that must be made feasible by the national government. We're under a, a threat. Uh, there are figures right now like uh, Luis Ortega, uh, uh, like Rodriguez Torres, who who are more center more center figures. Uh, just today, there was a march in Caracas in support of Luisa Ortega. I'm going to talk a little bit more about, about her right now. I'm sure people have questions about, about her, the public prosecutor. Uh, she's kind of uh, perfect. She's kind of showing up as a, as a figure that might be a center figure, uh, uh, as kind of a center figure between the, the government and the opposition, um, as someone who can negotiate with, with both sides and might end up as the, as the new the new new figure for the opposition, and it's really necessary that the that the that the government uh, begins begins taking a more 
uh, a more clear stance, a more a more strategic a, a more strategic a more a better strategy to, to resolve the basic needs of the people and more than anything with food distribution with services to be able to 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 take away from the, the leadership that that might come out from this center standpoint. A, The popular field, save honorable exceptions, uh, I'm going to talk about a few cases, uh, isolated instances, uh, for example, uh, in Guasadalito and Socopo, for instance, uh, there are campesinos uh, who have taken over land occupations of, of estates belonging to land, land, landowners who have been financing riding in, in Pedraza, Barinas, uh, campesinos, uh, peasants who, who have uh, done a uh, who have taken over land by, by landowners who have have lent their machinery, who have lent their um, who have lent their machinery, who have given money to the rioters in Medinas. Uh, the same thing has happened in, in Medina as well. Uh, the, my, the majority of the popular field at this point in time, uh, I would say, does not have the strength to contribute to a can to, to, to contribute into creating uh, a lot of solutions at this time. But we, we do need to uh, identify clearly, precisely, and concrete achievable goals, even if they are modest, uh, from there and try to recompose po possibilities and accumulate forces. We need to take uh, examples from these, from these cases, from, from these communities who have managed to organize themselves and have managed to defend themselves against these kinds of attacks. It's not an easy situation. Uh, with all the, the media spectacle and the international media spectacle looking uh, in every way possible to turn uh, these communities who are trying to defend themselves and, and turning them into supposed armed chavista uh, colectivos uh, or violent groups who are really just trying to defend their own territory. The Atlanta General Thing that I have five minutes left. Well, I just wanna I uh, I wanna emphasize a few things um, uh, in terms of, of Luis Ortega. Uh, some of you might have heard in the last in uh, there's a lot of stuff going on around her in the last few days. Uh, recently, the Supreme Court ordered a travel ban and an acid freeze against the Attorney General Luis Ortega. Uh, on Wednesday over allegations that she has overstepped her constitutional powers. Uh, this was issued by the Plain Air Chamber, Chamber of, the, of the Supreme Court. Uh, the, yeah, as a kind of a precautionary, me uh, precautionary measure ahead uh, of a hearing of allegations of grave misconduct in, ex in exercise of her office, for which she could face possible impeachment. During the hearing, the court will decide whether uh, Ortega would, could face criminal charges related to a long-running dispute in the court. Uh, meanwhile, a controversial decision the, the, the national, the, the Supreme Court Constitutional Tribune uh, has ruled the National Ombudsman's Office has a constitutional authority to investigate and prosecute criminal offenses which was formerly the monopoly of, of the monopoly of the of the prosecution, the office of, of Luisa Ortega. A national Ombudsman Tarek William and his office will also continue to be, review human rights abuses. Very a very uh, slack stance against it, to to be to put it lightly, a very slack stance against the, the extreme violence, the extreme cases of violence we've seen the the burnings of people alive, she's, she's questioned that even, and uh, she's placed that as, as protest and, and has talked about uh, extreme repression when, when she's even admitted that all of the, the, government, uh, the government and military forces who have been accused of, who have been accused of any kind of uh, uh, abuse of power have been, have been jailed during these violent protests. So, uh, She's definitely a very dangerous piece uh, to be in the hands of, of the opposition. Uh, the government has taken these decisions uh, to to lead that could lead to a possible impeachment, but that's also a very uh, delicate and, and, and difficult situation, as they could uh, the international media surely is going to try to paint it 
as a, a kind of political prosecution against her. But we need to be, pay a lot of attention to her situation in the next few days. <coughs> and I just wanted to mention a few other uh, a few other things that have been going on here. Uh, last week, uh, they they found three three thousand five hundred doses of a, of a jihadist drug called Captagon uh, in in Tachia. Uh, which is a which is a border state with Colombia. Uh, as I mentioned here in the state of Lara, here in Marquisimeto, uh, there have been several reports of drugs being given to given to young people just before the the barricades go out, just before there are, are violent protests. Uh, this is definitely something uh, we need to to be pay attention to. We need to really think about where this is coming from. Uh, since it was coming through the Colombian border towards Venezuela, who is financing these kind of, the, the trafficking of these kinds of drugs in Venezuela and what their use is being, uh, what they are being used for and who they are being given to. Also in Maracay, during the, during the rioting and looting uh, last week, there was also uh, uh, a, several, uh, several, uh, Examples of salmonella, brucellus, and other and, and other strains of, of of bacteria and viruses that were stolen from a laboratory. And so we also need to pay attention to to possible outbreaks or some sort of biological terrorism yeah. over the next few weeks. I'm gonna stop there, and we can pass it to to Fred, who's gonna talk about some some. Uh, some looks at the international media, how the international media is portraying the situation in Venezuela. But I just wanted to mention, in terms of that, uh, I don't know if any of you have seen this, but Reuters uh, last week uh, sent out a, a, a photography expose of Escuderos, or the shield-wielding uh, protesters. Uh, very, very high definition photographs in, in studio context, kind of glorifying, horrifying these uh, uh, these violent protesters. Some of them even holding holding their shields and holding their knives. Uh, it, it's very important that we pay attention to this kind of stuff because they're trying to turn people who are basically uh, in terrorist acts, people who have burned people alive. Who have shot, uh, who have shot people, and turned them into some sort of uh, superhero. The same thing with Oscar Perez. He's been all over the media. The, the helicopter driver, all over the media, portrayed as a Rambo, as a superhero. Uh, in in the Washington Post, they even uh, they even put him as a protester. And in no way, in no way, shape, or form, did they say that he was a that he was a uh, that he was a terrorist or that was involved in a, in, in a coup attempt. They said that he was a protester. Where uh, would it be possible? Imagine a helicopter flying over Washington D.C. or in Paris, uh, in Paris, saying that the, throwing bombs on top of the of the Supreme Court, and then say saying in the international media that is that this is a protester or that this person is a is a Rambo or a superhero. It's important to note that this is not the first time it happens either. The international media has constantly uh, portrayed uh, terror people involved in terrorist act in Venezuela as well as Cuba as uh, as international heroes. Uh, you can think of uh, of one case um, uh, in in 2003. There was there there was an attack uh, an, an explosion uh, on a building in Caracas. Uh, where the electoral council is, in, uh, where the, the two offices of the national electoral council was during a, a negotiations in of the American states. Uh, also, other intense, uh, open intense against the embassies of, of Spain and the consulate of, of Colombia in Caracas. These were done by two two ex militaries, Jose Colina Pulido and Germán Rojo Varela. These both of these men are now in. in are now in exile and, and are being uh, and have been heroized as well within the within the international media. And, uh, Colina is uh, belongs to a group of Venezuelans, the group of Venezuelan of uh, uh, political persecuted Venezuelans in exile, uh, and has received 
a lot of money from the North American Senate for this organization. Uh, and they have also been called upon as security, uh, as kind of security experts within Venezuela because they are by, by CNN in, in Spanish uh, because of their military uh, because of their military knowledge within Venezuela. So it's not the first time that the international media has looked to portray a uh, look to portray terrorists and criminals, people who have attacked Venezuela and other progressive countries within Latin America as heroes. So those are things that we need to be to pay a lot of attention to and don't be surprised if Oscar Perez appears in, in the United States and within the next few weeks also as as some sort of uh, poor, a great hero and for political uh, uh, someone who is being politically persecuted by Venezuela. Um, with that, I'm just going to hand it over to you, Fred. I'm sure there's a lot, of, lot to talk about in terms of international media.